In this video we're going to be looking at arc sine of x, the inverse sine of x. So there is an alternative notation to sine of minus 1 of x, and that is arc sine x. Both of these are exactly the same, they're just alternative notations for one another. Now in the previous video we looked at why um, functions must be one-to-one -one in order to find an inverse function. So we're going to look at sine x here. So if we look at sine x, I uh, try that again. So here's sine x, okay, and we can see that it's many to one. So what we might do in order to restrict the domain so that we're covering the range of the function, okay, is to cut it there and there. So we're going to cut the curve and restrict the domain so we're looking at just between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So I'm going to get rid of that part and I'm going to get rid of that part and I'm going to be left with this. And this is y is equal well, f of x equals sine x, where we've restricted the domain to minus pi over 2 to x to pi over 2. OK? Now, let's say I want to sketch arc sine of x. Now, arc sine of x, because it's an inverse function, that means that the curve is a reflection of this one in the line y equals x. Okay? And what we can do is we can use our understanding of domain range here. Because if pi over 2, 1 is reflected in the line y equals x, then that means that the new point is 1 pi over 2. So the curve, there's my point of 1 pi over 2. The curve will go through that point, start at that point, and this point here is at minus pi over 2 minus 1, and it will be reflected, so it's now minus 1 minus pi over 2. And so the curve would look something like that. Not a particularly good uh, curve at that. Could do a little bit better. Okay, but you get the general idea of the shape. Okay, so that is what f of x, or rather f minus 1 of x, equals arc sine x looks like. Okay, so it's like sine x between minus pi over, pi over 2 and pi over 2, but it's been reflected in the line y equals x, and so looks like that.